Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. Uh, in today's video, I am going to continue exploring the piano basics. And today's topic is the principles of pedaling. Um, pedaling really is a very, very difficult topic to cover with this online video format. Um, I find since the last three semesters we had uh, during the pandemic was all virtual lessons, I find it extremely difficult to even talk about pedal when we have virtual lessons, like online lessons. It's just really nearly impossible because how the microphone picks up the acoustic is nothing compared to the live one-on-one uh, -on -one lessons. Um, that's why in many of my tutorials, pedal is something I rarely talk about because it really depends on the piano it depends on the acoustic of the room. And to a very, very extreme example, um, if you have a dress rehearsal in an empty hall, and then the night of the performance is packed with audience, then you have to pedal differently, even playing the same piano in the same hall. Because then with a full attendance of many audience then the, the the hall becomes a little drier so uh, you have to probably use more pedal to achieve the same uh, acoustic effect so how can we <laughs> teach piano with this format well today I prepared a couple of principles um, not to teach you how to do this in Chopin scherzo or Chopin sonata but for people who haven't think about or doesn't have a good idea of the principles of pedaling um, to learn a thing or two about how to pedal. Um, first thing we have to understand is that pedal really is not like you turn on the switch and then there is light. You turn off the switch, then there is no light. It's not a switch. Right? Pedal has many, many layers. Yeah? If you do 100%, of course, then the effect is much richer. But if you do 50%, yeah? or you can do only 10%. Yeah? So it's, it's really, it really can make a big difference. Um, I always tell my students, Pedaling really is like driving, yeah? You step on the gas, but unless you are trying to get onto the highway, then you probably push it all the way down. Just imagine most of the time when we pedal, it's like driving in the local community, right? You're prepared to stop and you probably only do 20%, 30% when you try to accelerate, right? You never push it all the way to the bottom. Um, the other thing we have to always consider is that how to pedal really has a lot to do with the register, right? If this is very high register, if you understand the, the inside of the piano, it doesn't even have the damper, meaning with or without pedal, it's very similar. This is without the pedal, and this is with the pedal, and you see, even with more sound, it's other strings that is vibrating, not this one that is doing more. So when we have very low register, we have to know that the pedal should be less, or how we switch pedal, we should you know, be extra careful with, with the pedaling. Um, there are three types of timing in terms of how to pedal. Uh, very, very uh, easy concept. Sometimes we can pedal before we play. Sometimes we can do it simultaneously with our hand. Sometimes we should do it after we play. Um, and you never can give a very accurate statistical analysis of how many was the percentage of <laughs> pedal after or pedal before. But I can say more than 90% of the time, 
we do it after we play. Okay, so when do we need it to put the pedal before? Yeah, things like pathetic or first ballad, the opening is kind of big and it's slow, then we want the first chord to be vibrated by all the strings, yeah, because that's the principle of having the sustaining pedal. All strings will be vibrating, yeah, not just the note you're playing. So here is when I put the pedal before and see how rich the sound is. But then if I don't pedal, if I pedal after, It's really not as sonorous. Yeah, there is not as much sonority inside this chord. Okay? Or if I do the first ballad, I put the pedal before. Huh? Instead of put the pedal after, then really it's not two notes that is vibrating is 88 keys yeah, that is helping the, to produce a much richer sonority. And when do we do it together with the hand? Yeah, that, to understand that, we have to understand that pedal really has a function of, first of all, sustaining the note. And like I said before, it makes the sonority richer, uh, but it actually makes it uh, not as sharp yeah so if we want to have a very kind of resoluto decisive ending then we do it together with the note we don't yeah? that's a different kind of ending it's more majestic instead of this this sharpness in it this anger in it and like I said, most of the time, we will change the pedal after we play the note or the chord, okay? We call this, you know, the, the pedal afterward, <laughs> yeah? So uh, how does this work? Um, and that's very difficult to, to really teach a student, especially uh, beginners, um, because then that requires a combination, right? A, a collaboration between the foot the hand, and mostly, the most important is the ear. So we play a note or a chord, and then we pedal, and I'm of, of course doing this 10 times slower. The next chord we change to, after we play, we release the pedal, and we make sure the previous C major is gone, and then we put the pedal back. Now, I'm going to go back to the tonic chord. I play the chord, no pedal, my hand is holding. I make sure everything is clear, and then I give it the green light. Now I can pedal. So the most common mistake for students would be that they go back, they put the pedal back too soon. So that yeah, so they don't have 100% of the previous sound already uh, released before they put a new chord in. And why do I say it's the ear's job that is the most important? Because the ear has to give a feedback to the hand and the foot. It's clear then I can put the pedal down. Okay? So this part often is missing. That's why sometimes we hear uh, muddy playing with you know everything covered under a pedal. Um, and also something to, we also need to pay attention to is that for a certain time we actually need to hold this chord with our fingers. Yeah, a lot of times I see students when they have pedal, then they just release. They thought, okay. 
I don't need to no longer uh, hold the, the cord. Uh, I can just depend on the pedal. Um, that's usually not <laughs> a good idea because you see, if, if we don't, if we don't uh, hold it long enough, then there will be a gap. Okay, and also, of course, this is not entirely related to pedal, but also when we play chords, okay, and the chord lasts for let's say a half note or a whole note. If you think, oh, the pedal will do the work, let me just play and release, then just hold and release, the tone usually is not right. Okay, like Tao Wei Sing. If you are prepared to sing a long note, the whole preparation part is different compared to if you are singing a short note. Right? Of course, singing doesn't have pedal, and we have pedal, but don't think the pedal as a shortcut. Okay, it's something essential, but the way you play chords or the way you play notes or melodies or whatever, it should not be changed because now we have this wonderful creation called pedal. Okay, um, of course, this is really a tip of the iceberg. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you think now you know how to pedal, then you're wrong. It's only the very simple, basic principles of how to pedal. Um, so again, if you have questions on a specific piece in a specific measure, you can ask me through the comment column or you can email me. My email is in the uh, introduction of my channel. Um, thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode.